Welcome back to our 55th episode of the Launcher Farm Show, where I interview Jenny Weimert with the Weimert Realty Group in Orlando. In this episode, Jenny and I talk about why she chose to get involved in her farm by focusing on things she would like to see as a mom and how she built relationships doing what she enjoyed. Jenny also shares how she built her farm up to an 80% market share by learning to find her tribe in the community and become the go-to ambassador. We talk about what type of marketing and events she does in her area to build a database of over 100,000 people. And she shares a ton of examples so that you can see what's worked best for them. Jenny also shares a super easy way to get a ton of contact information from your members and so that you can grow your database very quickly. And she shares how she's adapted and evolved her current business to leverage the strategies and tactics she's learned from farming and how she's using it to expand her team even further. Plus, we talk about a ton of other ideas that you can use to grow your farm. So be sure to check out this episode, like and subscribe, and enjoy the episode with Jenny. Welcome back to another episode of the Launch Your Farm Show. I'm your host, Ryan Smith, and today we've got a great guest. It's Jenny Weimert from Weimert Realty Group in Orlando. Jenny, take a second, tell us a bit about yourself and why you're here. Great. Well, it's I'm happy to be back and um, happy to you know give you as much as I can in, <laughs> um, in the little time that we have. But uh, I do run a team um, out of Orlando, Florida. We uh, call ourselves a team of rich because we do have our own brokerage, but we operate only in a team model, um, rainmaker team model where we provide you know um, quite a few leads and a lot of leverage and. Uh, such to our agents. Um, last year, I think we sold over 900 homes wow. and um, for about 282 million uh, in volume. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, you for the viewers who don't know, you were on my old show, the, the Niche Agent, years ago. So I wanted to have you back because you, you've done some incredible things and you've grown since then and really added in some new things. So I want to dive into your kind of the past. As I always start out with what got you into real estate and, and how did that look like at the beginning for you? Sure. Well, you know, 21 years ago now, I was <laughs> have an old dog in this business at this point. Uh, I was a teacher and um, I was a seventh grade science teacher. I was good at it, loved it, but I wasn't fulfilled. I was just not getting enough feedback fast enough. Um, mm. And I was teaching for all the wrong reasons at that point. So I thought, well, I definitely need to be selling something. I know that's my, you know, I'm, I'm just a kind of a one trick pony on influence. Uh, so what should I be selling? And both of my father's stepfather and uh, biological father owned real estate companies throughout my, you know, growing up. So I'm like, well, I kind of know real estate. So let me, let me go sell some real estate. And, um, you know, when I started, I mean, this is, geez, you know, 20 years ago, I grabbed some cassette tapes from a, a guru um, and, you know, she was a farmer and she would tell stories about how she'd put her kids in the stroller and walk around the neighborhood and, and hand out flyers and meet people and, and hand out raincoats. I remember her saying that. <laughs> and so I was like, well, I'll do that. And yeah. so I just did that and uh, kind of got out of the gate and, um, was able to build a business off of, you know, really farming. And, um, you know, we're not only farmers now, but it was yep. a great foundation to our business. Yeah. And that's really what we want to dive in today is taking it from farming and elevating it. Cause that's something you've done really well. Like in, in the past episode, when I had you on my old show, you were excelling at that and you've really grown past that. So I want to dive into how you've done that, but I want to go back to the farming fundamentals at the beginning first before we do that. So for you, what did that look like for you? What were you doing to really get that success? Cause you had some really great success, especially, and I know in your original farm, you really crushed it as far as market uh, market yeah. share. Well, and I think it's important to note when I tell the story <laughs> is that this is sort of like pre-internet, like, yeah you know, pre realtor.com pre Zillow. So that plays out in my story later. But when I first started, I did just what Danielle Kennedy told me to do. And I put my babies, I had multiples um, in a stroller and I would walk around the neighborhood and I just used any excuse to get to know the neighbors. And so I started bunco groups. I started play groups for the moms. Um, I would help with organizing the community garage sales. I would throw the Easter egg hunt for Easter. Um, I developed a newsletter and we would, you know, hand deliver those to the doors every month. 
um, brought in Santa at Christmas time for photos, partly because I wanted my community to, you know, to build a community around my family and our, yeah. you know, be proud of where we lived. Yep. But, you know, through those efforts, um, you know, I was able to build a tribe of people in a, in a community they, that knew, loved and trusted me and referred to me. And, you know, back in 05, 06, I got up to 80% market share in there. Yeah, that's and um, the only reason we lost some ground is the REO business in seven, eight, you know, yeah. we didn't have control over. Yeah. We still do 50%. I don't live there anymore, but we still do 50% of the, the market share in there. Wow. Um, just because we have been consistently marketing in that one community month after month for 15 years. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's just consistent. It's not fancy. Yeah. It's like <laughs> white newsletters delivered to the door. Yeah. It's throwing the egg hunts, you know, pre-COVID. Um, and, you know, flags in the yard at 4th of July. I mean, we, we've done it for 15 years. Yeah. Like it's, it, we built a kind of a formula and it worked and we stuck to it and yeah. it was calendared every year. And yeah. It's great because like you said, it's the consistency that's the most important part. And I tell people it's better to do something consistently than do nothing or do it half-assed and do it once in a while. And the other really important part that you brought up, which is something I tell people all the time is you built your community events around things that you'd want to do and see in the community. And so many people say, well, that's not going to work in my community because there isn't that already. The, that's not going to work because we don't do that here. No one does that. And I always tell it, it's like, if it's there, great, leverage it. But if it's not there, create it. And you can be the person who does that now, if you don't want to do that and don't make that part of your business, but you can absolutely make the community what you want by being involved in creating those events and those things like that, which is what you did. And you, you have the success to prove it. Yeah. And I would add a caveat to that, that, um, you know, if you're going to get involved with the community, don't get on the architectural review board <laughs> or the homeowners board, yeah. unless you want to be the bad guy, you know? Yeah. So, I was always just the one that would step forward and make things happen socially. Yep. And, um, you know, people will show up. They just don't want to plan it or be responsible for anything, but they'll show up. Yep. And we would get 100 families out for an Easter egg hunt. Wow. And those were the best, to be honest, because we would get them out. They would, we'd have them sign in. We would do a raffle. We got all their contact information, permission to, you know, send them things. And then, we would throw the eggs, the kids would pick them up. We were like carnies. We were in and out of there <laughs> in 30 minutes. And we got a hundred names and phone numbers. Yeah. And, you know, they checked, do I want to know what my home is worth? Do I, am I looking to purchase or sell in the next six months? And, and we would walk away with leads for 30 minutes. It was the yeah. best. That's awesome. um, and, you know, I mentioned that in that community, we built sort of a, a we built a system and it was a formula. And I realized, okay, well, I want to grow. Yep. And so I went and duplicated that formula in a second community. Yep. And then we, you know, got market share there. And we still, we still market in those, that community as well, every month with the newsletter yep. and the parties, um, I, you know, same, same system. Both communities were 400 homes at the time. And we were, that got us to like, that was all that I did for marketing again, before Zillow realtor.com. Yeah. And that got us to about 20 million in production. Wow. Um, but it was working it right. Yeah. Like it was working those relationships and, you know, working their family and friends. I mean, I remember in 2005, people would come to my door with their cousin from New York and say, she wants to buy a house. Can you help her this week? <laughs> like, yeah. What's happening? You know, that was, yeah. those were the times, but yeah. um, you know, that, that they knew who I was. I was just the realtor in the neighborhood with the, with the multiples. And um, so that was kind of, that was good. What ended up happening to us in like uh, nine, oh, nine, 10 for sure. Um, I realized okay, coming out of that REO market, got, which got so weird, we were 75% distressed here. Yeah. Like everything we did didn't yeah. matter. Like we had to keep the relationships, but you know, you didn't, you had different- It wasn't short-term business. But um, when people started coming back out and searching for realtors, they weren't just going to my handwritten newsletter you know, or my, you know, copied newsletter. They're going to the internet. They're going to Zillow. Right. They're going to realtor.com. 
And I realized I needed to layer my marketing. I couldn't rely just on farming. And so I went and bought the zip codes in realtor.com and Zillow yep. so that I would be there when they went looking. Yep. And then it would remind them, oh, I've been seeing her in our neighborhood for years, you know, yep. like exactly. to validate everything I was doing in the farms. Yeah, exactly. And that's one of the things I teach is called strategy stacking, where you layer your strategies and you have to be hitting people in different ways. The old school of just sending out postcards or flyers, things like that are not long gone, but the effectiveness is not there to the same extent. And like you said, they're looking online, they're looking different places, you've got to be hitting them in different places to capture more market share. And if you do that correctly, you can do it effectively, you can actually save money if you do it right, because you can reach people in different ways versus just spending more money on flyers or more money on postcards, it's not going to get you more of a, a return. And you perfectly tied into what I was going to ask next, which was you evolved, you moved out to that next neighborhood, and then you copy those systems over. Once you hit that, how did you scale up? Because I find a lot of people when they are starting their farm, they can scale up to a certain extent, but they can't reproduce usually what they've done because there is a lot of time, energy, and effort into the, the relationships and things like that. So what did you do past that? Because you talked about 2009, 2010. What did that scaling look like, like past that other than just the, the buying lot leads online? Yeah. Well, I think it's important to note, like, the, the bit, your database is the foundation for your business, yeah. right? So whatever you're going to do to feed the database and get a large number of people who know, love, and trust you is yep. what matters. Yep. So you can choose farming to fill that database. You can buy leads and start to fill a database, you know, yep. whatever that may be, you've got to start getting people into your database. And so yep. the farming was what we chose to do because I wanted it to work around my life and I enjoyed it. I knew I'd be good at it and I was a connector. And so I chose farming but it could only take me so far. There's only four, 800 homes, right? And yeah. you know, I didn't have everybody. So, um, but you know, over the time, I've got you know 30 or 90 past clients a year that I'm putting in my database. And the important piece there is to not forget them. Don't you know? It, so it's now the farming for us is beyond these. You know, we do three or four neighborhoods still like that. Yep. We, we're just, you know, we don't want to abandon these communities. We've been doing it for years, yeah. um, but we farm our database now. Yeah. Like it's now we have people, it, you know, we have a hundred thousand person database at this point, which is yeah, wow, like a, that's crazy, <laughs> like it's yeah. crazy for a large city. Um, but like it's um, that's now we farm our database. Now yeah. all of the touches, the types of touches we do in a neighborhood, we do to our past clients. Yeah. Um, so when we went and we started buying Zillow and Realtor.com zip codes to cover ourselves, we had an influx of leads. And so for us, we've always, and still to this day, only hire if we have um, enough leads to feed another family. Right. Or, uh, and it, you know, makes sense from revenue perspective. Yeah. You know, we're not, you know, spending ahead to try to hit a goal, some arbitrary goal. We are doing the right things every day to take care of our past clients, to take care of our farms, to take care of our community. Yeah. And, you know, we do buy leads. We need them to do a thousand transactions. That's not going to come from a farm, yeah. you know, at this point, but we do not forget our fundamentals. Yeah. Like, you know, you've got to take care of your database. hundred yeah, percent. So we just, one of the mantras I teach is that your farm or your, so your neighborhood really isn't your farm. Your neighborhood is your funnel and the farm is really the people that put their hand up. It is the people that end up in your database. And so many people look at farming that it's just, I'm going to send it to a thousand people. And I'm going to mail out stuff. And it's like, no, it's the people that you can get to put their hand up. It's the people that you've gotten the contact information from. It's people you've built relationships with. That's really who your farm is. That's just your vehicle to get them there. And like you said, that's one of your vehicles and you can expand and then keep doing that, but you still have to feed the funnel and the funnel is becomes your database and when you have the database in order that's when you can start to see the success so for you as you grew that how did you manage that because for a lot of agents they struggle with that especially if they go they go big they go to a big farm and they do online that's overwhelming i know for myself i grew my database to 3600 people by myself and i couldn't manage it so how obviously you have a big team how did that look like for you working through 100,000 leads or to getting to that point yeah well, you know, I did it and I wanted to like for my clients and it became a system. So everything we do becomes a system, you know, yeah. write it down and duplicate it. 
you know, you can't scale unless you have duplicatable systems. And so it started with me and how I wanted my past clients to be communicated with and how often. And, and then when we hired our agents, mm. the value proposition for them to join our team beyond leads is the fact that we provide a lot of leverage to them and right. we help support them building their um, database. So, um, you know, we'll, we send out on their behalf birthday cards to past clients, home anniversary cards. Uh, the first year they purchase a home, they get a, a Christmas ornament from us, you know, for their tree for their first year in their home. Uh, all of that kind of happens automatically because it's calendared. There's someone um, on our team tasked with it mm. and it gets done, you know, um, a lot of it has been automated, you know, the, and the, the Christmas ornament that is done at each closing. It goes in a basket that's mailed in December. You know, it's not like in December, we're sitting there a, <laughs> yeah. a thousand ornaments. So, it doesn't yeah. make sense. so yeah. it's just, um, it's systemized, it's calendared um, and then held accountable. And, but we do a lot for them. And then we throw events that they can invite their clients to. So we take the, you know, the, the planning out of it, the fear of, um, will anybody show, you know, yeah. being able to do it on scale, you know, you're not standing there with three people at your client event, you, <laughs> but, you know, like a hundred people and it's more comfortable. Yeah. So, um, you know, we do the movie theaters and we do the shredding events and such. And I've got a couple of examples I can share with you, but um, we do that. And then all they have to do is invite their past clients. Nice. You know, we have um, a Facebook group that is for our past clients and um, VIPs, and we call it Friends with Benefits. <laughs> we, we don't market to our clients in there. It's just simply a place to connect with them, provide them, um, you know, sweepstakes or contests or, nice. um, you know, we, everybody whose birthday is that month, it goes in for a drawing and they get a, they win a gift card. Um, you know, our vendors give away things. And so we'll do a, a drawing for that. And it's just a way for us to get them important information mm -hmm. or, you know, just connecting. And it's a way for us to do it on scale yeah. um, and make sure it's, it's happening because if you leave it to the agents, you know, they get busy. So, and like you said, it's, you're not selling to them. You're not pitching to them. So it's becomes more valuable to them and they want to stick around. If it was, pitch, 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 offer, pitch, 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 offer by having it more in their benefit. They're more likely to keep coming back. They're not going to unsubscribe or check out from it. And it just keeps them engaging, which is that's the value. And, and you're staying top of mind without having to sell because it, the value you're bringing is what's selling for them, which is awesome. Right. And we teach our agents, you know, when they first come into our team, you know, they're on what we call like the machine, they're going to need a lot of leads. Yeah. So they plug into the leads, but by the time they're in second to third year of real estate, we expect them to be at about a 50% repeat referral wow. basis. And, and we demonstrate to them how they, why they want to focus on that, because, mm -hmm. you know, they're going to be able to get two for one deals with past yeah. clients, you know, and they're also one client, two deals. That's what to yeah. win yeah. and um, higher price points and more loyal buyers and sellers. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, like it's, it's just the you the end they've built a business and yeah. it's something that they can start to count on instead of being hostage of the market of the moment or how many leads we're able to generate today. Yeah. You know, they they have something that they can really count on. And so out of the thousand transactions, we're 40% repeat referral, which wow. is kind of unheard of yeah. in a machine like ours. Yeah, that yeah. big because I I know people who do that on a small scale doing 15, 20 deals a year, but that, that doesn't translate it to that, that right. scale. So uh, I want to ask you about the local side of things. Cause obviously you're, you're working a, a big city. Are you doing localized marketing or is it generalized marketing to everyone in your database? Or do you have it like segmented and broken down because there's a lot of people in there and a lot of moving parts. Like what does your marketing look like to your, to the database itself? Yeah, it's not necessarily localized because we sold in a, over 114 zip codes last year. Okay. So we cover Central Florida. Yep. Uh, it would be very, very time consuming to break it down. Yeah. Uh, but we do do like we do an e-newsletter out to, um, you know, our database. So we yep. have kind of one in general that goes to our past clients. 
then we have one that's buyer focused and one that's listing focused. Okay. And then based on how we've categorized our clients, you know, they get those newsletters. Um, but we do like, you know, we, we rank our clients too, you know, so if they're going to be a, you know, an, uh, like a VIP or they they have given us referrals, mm. we mark them in our database so we can easily pull from everyone's database who our top referring clients are and who yep. should we be paying attention to. And they're the ones that get like the pies at Thanksgiving right. or the invites to the events. Yeah, you're not selling 100,000 pies because that'd be yeah. a lot. <laughs> oh, you but might it be, all but... starts with that database. Like, yeah. We, we note in our database who's a teacher, who's a police officer. You know, we do back to school touches. Um, we'll do veterans. Um, we mark the um, who's our, who are our top clients and past clients. So we can easily sort and pull and maneuver in our databases because we spend our time making sure that they're right. Yeah. That's that's a big part of it. Is staying on top of things because it can easily at that scale can easily get lost and things can get slip under the under the rug and you don't realize it and then it's like you got a mess to, to fix it. So which is good. Yeah. Uh, I want to ask you about the um, the growth at the beginning. How you transferred from getting referrals from your farm to outside of the area because I know a lot of agents struggle with they're working their farm and then sometimes they, people don't think they work in another area. So how did you in that growth phase keep the message going? Hey, we still sell locally, but we're also expanding. What did that look like for you? You know, it wasn't, um, it wasn't a moment like, you know, the REO business catapulted us into a different, so it was like, there wasn't that moment. Um, you were forced. I do (laughs) see my friends who that have gotten hyper local, you know, struggle with that, but there's something to be said for staying hyper local and yep. not having to cover 114 yeah. zip codes, you know, yeah. so I would much rather be in that hyper local zone um, as long as you have enough opportunity there. Yeah. Um, because again, when you go to layer your marketing, it becomes easier. You know, yeah. if you're going to go do an event, you know, taste of uh, Lake Nona in our area or whatever, and you set up a, a booth the people that are going to be walking by your booth in that area are going to be also the people who are getting your newsletter in your community right. or are part of your Facebook page that you've started to, you know, whatever. Um, so it's, you know, just top of mind yeah. where, you know, if you go do the garden show at the convention center, you know, oh, it sounds like a great idea. Thousands of people are going to walk by me, but they've never seen or heard of you before. Yeah. What a waste of money. Exactly. And you're paying more to be exposed to more people, but you don't get the same uh, conversion rates because they don't know who you are. And that's why I tell people, that's why starting with local hyper-local events is much better. And people are worried that they're not gonna be able to do it. And I know my own farm, when I started, we were struggled at first to let people know that we sell outside of the area because we branded ourselves as the local experts. So we were the orchard real estate teams. It was in the neighborhood that we farmed. And then people go, oh, I didn't realize you did business outside of there. But the business we lost was not even close to the business we gained because of the hyper local side of things. And because we, we were at the schools, we were at the events, we were at those localized things. And that really made a difference. And yeah. I tell agents all the time, it's like, yes, you may lose some business because they don't think your work outside the area, but you'll get more, but then you can scale it up. And then that's where you started doing powered by or brought to you by. And we tie in our overall brand with our local brand and stuff like that. So you can, a lot of things you can do. So I want to ask you about the systems you put into place, because for a lot of agents, they struggle creating systems. They, they just kind of fly by the seat of their pants. Is that you creating them? Do you have someone specifically creating them? Is it just out of like, oh, crap, we messed up. We need to put a system in place. Or like, how did that evolve for you to grow the systems that way? All of the above. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it starts with when you're doing it yourself, writing it down and creating a checklist, you know, so you can't keep it all up in your head. You know, if you're going to take a new listing, what are all the steps that you have to make sure you're covering to, and what did you tell your sellers you were going to do? Even it's you doing it all the, you know, first time, eventually, if you want to be able to get leverage or you have help um, or train someone else, you need to be able to transfer that, you know, system to somebody else. It can't be stuck in your head. So just writing everything down. It doesn't have to be perfect or pretty. It just needs to be duplicatable. Um, And then eventually when you scale and we're a team of 75 now, you have to make sure that, you know, not only is it written down on a piece of paper somewhere, 
it needs to be accessible to everyone across the board. And yeah. when we have like transaction managers working on files and listing managers putting listings in and, you know, agents working on it, you know, you have to have systems that are transparent, yeah. that are cloud-based, you know, I mean, like it just gets a lot harder to scale. Yeah. But <laughs> it starts with running it down on a piece of paper, yeah. you know, and then eventually you're like, okay, well, what worked for 10 people isn't going to work for 20. Right. So I got you go to the next place and then, you know, f systems that we use at, a, you know, 75 people aren't cost effective for that agent with five people. Yeah. You, you just have to go, you have to work your way up, you yeah, know, exactly. so. It's, it's, it's moving with it and evolving with it. Yeah. And so how often are you rewriting your manuals and systems? Because obviously you are growing at different, so you must be re, Daily. yeah, okay. <laughs> Seriously. So, so a lot of time spent on that then. The market shifts, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's kind of my job now, right? So the market shifts, we, you know, our, our listing marketing changes, or, um, you know, right now where our lead management systems are constantly evolving. Um, you know, how do we answer the phone? Who's answering the phone? How often? Like all of that, you know, becomes yeah. a uh, question that we're just constantly answering and shifting and trying to do the best by our our people, but also most importantly by our clients like yeah. what's the best client experience yeah. if i were a client what would i want from this team yeah. so. and that's the key for a lot of agents is that when you put the client first and then keep going how can we make this better versus a lot of agents i find just kind of get in the the a rut or, or just a they do what they do and it's like ah, oh, that's what i've been doing i've been doing it for 10 years and, this, and they don't change it it's like you got to be going how can we make this better? How can we evolve? How can we add in more things? And when you do that, yeah, it takes more work, but you're going to have a better experience on the other end to the consumer. You're going to have more repeat and referral as a result of it. And yeah, there's going to be some, some things, hurdles you got to overcome with it, but it's just going to help you grow and, and stay relevant as well and not yeah. die out with it. Well, and I think it's important to note too, like, you know, this is for a single agent, this is for anybody really. If you Google yourself, what do you see? Like when you Google, if you have a realtor.com profile, a Zillow profile, you're going to have one, whether you want one or not. <laughs> yeah. So what, and it's going to have Google ranking. And so when you go there, are you a ghost? Like, do you not have your photo in there? Could, if I wanted to refer to you, could I find your phone number? Can I find your email? Yeah. Is it on the front page of your Facebook? Is it like Google yourself, right? Yeah. So client experience if they, if I want people to find me, refer me and hire me, where, where do they find me? How do they do that? You know, and the top agents, like, I'm like, I want to refer to them. And I'm like searching high and low for a phone number. I'm like, what is happening? Yeah. You know, so, um, you know, just simple stuff like that. And then on top of that, focusing on getting good testimonials from your clients, mm. making sure that they're in Google, in Zillow, everywhere that somebody's going to research you can read them. Yep. And that is probably the thing that catapulted us the further, the fastest yep. back in 2010, 11, is we got ahead of everyone on testimonials. Yeah, that's huge. And I would tell some people also is to leave testimonials for the local businesses that you're working on and with, because it helps them grow. They're going to remember you they're going to, you also get seen, especially if you're staying hyper-local, your stuff will be seen because people are out reading, reading reviews. And I did this test a while back and I was reading, leaving reviews to see how many views I could get. And I had like hundreds of thousands of views from my reviews. So it means people are seeing it and they're reviewing it. And then if you tie it in with all the other stuff, it will definitely help and, and vice versa. It allows people to leave reviews for you, which elevates you. So I, I want to dive into some of the marketing because I know you've you brought some examples of some marketing. I graciously I'm excited to, to see some of this because for some people, they get, they struggle with the creating marketing pieces and what do they actually send. And they sometimes create stuff that doesn't, in my opinion, doesn't work, work very well. So do you want to share your screen and show some examples sure. of some of the marketing you, you guys do then? Sure. And um, I should say out loud for, uh, for the sake of my uh, marketing team that they did not create this. This is me copying, pasting. Like, so this is, um, you know, just so you know. Um, but I brought a couple of just samples because I think sometimes people are, um, you know, the, you know, um, visual, right? Yep. Yep. Uh, so here's just a quick, you know, we talked about having a plan. Here's our 33 touch post-closing plan. Um, what are they doing at the closing table? 
What are they, this follow-up boss is our database. What are we doing in our database and how often are we touching our past clients? And those are tasks that pop up for our agents. And then what is the team, WeMarker Realty, doing on the behalf of our agents to connect with their clients? Right. So, so you guys are taking care of that part of the, for them then, so they're not yeah. touching that. So I'm going to give you this link so you, you guys can have this, awesome. but um, here's an example of our Christmas ornaments, the three years worth of them. We change it every year. They're lightweight. We like the leather ones because we've learned the hard way. Um, they're lightweight, easier to stick in an envelope. You're not mm. paying as much on postage yeah. and you still get your big bang for the buck. And, and the clients go back onto social media and thank you. And they're so, you know, so appreciative. So um, another idea is um, where we have the agent or have our people, like our database, call us. So we offer out a, a, a big prize and we have them call us. And so we have our agents on standby to take their information, put them in the in the sweepstakes and um, and then maybe, you know, try to connect with them and, you know, what kind of realtor would I be if I didn't ask if you're thinking about buying or selling right now, right? Yeah. So the twist on this sweepstakes is that they're calling us instead yeah. of just registering online. Um, we did a scholarship for a graduating senior. We partnered nice. with our title company and lender. So that was a nice way to connect with the community and the neighborhoods. So we got you know, a lot of social media ground on that. We got, yeah. um, so, and, you know, just broad. And then we went into our neighborhoods and promoted it. And so that was a, that was a good thing. We do the teachers in our local schools. Um, so we give out car line umbrellas for the teachers nice. um, that have our logo on them. We do the car line, um, you know, plaque that they put up on their windshield. So the front is what school, what class are they in? And our, the back is our ad. Nice. Um, and then we did a little giveaway to the teachers, $500 credit. And we had these fun pens for them to keep on their desks. Um, so that was just an idea. Uh, we did a shredding event for the community where, and that was inexpensive and got, a, again, broad social media coverage, something else we can do into our farms. Um, and to our past client list. So it covers everything, which in pretty inexpensive, easy to run. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, sweepstakes, we do a lot of sweepstakes. So we do a spring cleaning sweepstakes. So we get all of our um, you know, vendors together. And so the painter will give away painting a free room. Uh, we give away a carpet cleaning. We give away a landscape for refresh, you know, and so everybody registers for that and then they win the package. That's and great. That's awesome. Very inexpensive for us, you know, not a whole lot off the, our, our vendors backs. We don't ask for much from them. And so um, that's always a big popular thing. So they're do donating that right out of their own pocket then that one room or the one clean, are you paying for that? We, um, no, they pay for it. They, they oh, just donate it. Just yeah. get the exposure for them. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and then we give, you know, like we give extra tags if they tag friends in that or extra entries, you know, that nice. kind of thing. Um, we do, this was just kind of fun with our um, clients. We did it, we hit, we hit eggs on our website. So we, we nice. needed some website coverage. We needed yeah, yeah. Wanted them to check out our website. So we hit some eggs and That's great. We did a little contest. I like that a lot. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this was a, um, this is just an example of something we would post in our friends with benefits, Facebook group. Um, you know, what is, this was a, um, tell us about your favorite guilty, uh, pleasure soundtrack, you mm -hmm. know, and everybody responds and we put, put everybody in a, a random pick and we give away $50, That's you awesome. know, we're just driving, driving, um, participation. Yep. We did a Halloween costume in our friends with benefits group um, with where the kid, they posted their kids pictures and <laughs> awesome. way of, you know, Halloween gift. That was kind of fun. Yeah. Um, when we were going through quarantine, we did a spirit week. We all wore crazy socks. And so we invited our, our clients to post their crazy socks and we gave away a gift card, um, you know, for just, just kind of, involving them and we we call ourselves we mates we're we Mer group realty yeah we call ourselves we mates and um so you know everybody the team the our 
our our past clients buy into that. And they were like, we want to be a <laughs> week. You know? um, this is another quarantine kind of touch, but just the idea we made signs that are cheap and we hand deliver, delivered them to their doors with, you know, a couple of Corona and limes and, and you just kind of a, just, Hey, thinking of you guys uh, touch to our top people. Um, and then we do pies. We do a pie giveaway um, every year. We do, but we deliver them. We don't have them come to us. A lot of people have people come to them. Yeah. We, we go to the people because yep. they want to show us their homes and, yep. um, so it's more time just, consuming, but it's more personal than, than yeah. Yeah. So I think that's it, but I just wanted to share just a few, just samples. You could track us on Weimer group realty. Um, and we post all of, you know, evidence of all of that. Uh, awesome. so you would be able to see it if somebody is interested, but just a few ideas of how we kind of try to, we, we try to pick ideas and then where can we, can we use it for our past clients? Can we use it for our farms? Yeah. Can we use it for the social media committee um, community. The great thing with a lot of those strategies is that they're scalable at small scale to, to, to full scale as well. So if someone is a single agent and just doing their a smaller farm, you can do a lot of those things at a small scale and can grow with you. Cause I remember, I forget who it was on one of my earlier episodes. They said anytime, I think it was Jenny Wolick. I don't know if you know oh, Jenny. Yeah. So she was okay. talking about when she creates events, she looks at events that they can scale and do repeatedly and do it over and over again. So they're not having to recreate the wheel. Cause sometimes people come up with a new event every single new year, every year. And then they've she's like, we look at it and go, how can we make it bigger and better each time? And a lot of yeah. those can absolutely scale up. And it's a good mix of who you're hitting and, and who you're, how you're attracting. Cause the shred it may not be the same person who's going to connect with the pies or the Christmas yeah. things. So you're, you're attracting people from different personality types and, and really hitting people in different ways, which is, that's awesome. Yeah. And we sit down at the beginning of the year and we calendar it all. And most yeah. of it, like you mentioned, is just repeatable events. And yeah. so the spring clean, we give away um, Halloween tickets to um, uh, Disney for four yeah. in the fall. And I mean, we get a thousand registrations for that. Like it's crazy. Yeah. Um, the whole idea is to try whenever you're farming or doing social media, you want people to engage. Yeah. And so by doing the sweepstakes, you do the forms, you get their name, phone number, and email. And now you can, because they've given it to you, you yeah. can, you know, send them things and put them on whatever. Yeah. Um, you want to respect it or they won't like you, but you know, <laughs> yeah. just <laughs> to be yeah. careful with that. But I, you know, the whole, whenever you're farming, you, whatever event you're doing, make sure you're getting their contact yeah. information. 100%. Yeah. And then you're doing cross promotion with the local businesses. And that's a big thing that I'm a big believer in, especially right now with COVID. I say this all the time that we have an opportunity now more than ever, because people are so hyper aware of supporting local businesses than we've ever had before. And you can be that ambassador for the community. You can be the ambassador for those local businesses. You can provide content for your audience. You can provide value to the local businesses and you can grow your database and tie it all together and really grow it quickly rather than just trying to tell them, sign up for my newsletter. Like you're adding way more to them. And that's, that's, that's the big thing. And one of the things I teach all the time is you should look at a one-to-many approach is how can I reach more than one person at a time? And yes, it's great to connect one-on-one, -on -one, but can I get in front of that local business's audience and can they get in front of my audience? And when you can do that, you can reach more people and connect and grow your database to a hundred thousand people, which is huge. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about the database, you know? <laughs> So you've great, gave some great examples, great advice here. We always wrap up with one last piece of advice. So if someone's looking to get started, obviously 99.9% .9 of agents aren't at the scale that you're at with the size. Going back from what you've done, what advice would you give to agents who are looking to scale from a smaller farm to, to take it to the next level? Yeah, well, that, I think that to start, they've got to find something that they're passionate about yeah. um, and they, you know, they shouldn't just do it because that worked for me. Like you mentioned, <laughs> yeah. like if, you know, a farm could be a residential neighborhood. A farm could be, if they're bodybuilders, it could be other people who work out every morning at the gym at yeah. five in the morning, you know, like, it, or it could be um, the soccer leagues or whatever that they're into. Find the passion because when you're passionate about something, you're going to be magnetic. Yeah. And so how can you plug into your community where you're at? And yeah. then- and then it's how, how many people can you get into your database? How many people can you, 
serve, you know, because you want to be reciprocal. So give them referrals, help them grow. They'll help you grow, right? Yep. You build that. And then, you know, when you get to have too many opportunities, then you figure out what your next step is in leverage. And then, yep. you know, for me, it was just, I want, I kept going for time back because I had the babies and I needed more time. So yep. I hired an assistant and then I hired a buyer's agent and then we got too busy again and we plugged the next hole and it was another assistant. And to this day, like just had a conversation today, we need to fi hire five ISAs. Okay, that's another hole. And like, so we are, we're just constantly just trying to be better yeah. with the talent that we have and, and then plug the hole yeah, and that's you know, keep growing. Yeah. That's, it grows organically. Yeah. And, and you're willing to do that and put the time in, like I said, you're not just staying stagnant with what you did and going, oh, I'm happy with that. And it's being better, but not taking on more. And some people do that. They'll just keep adding on more stuff and then they don't have the time. You, your intention was to do the opposite, was to replace it so you could get your time back, which is what yeah. you should be doing. Well, and don't let that marketing slip because that's the first thing yes. that you <laughs> Yeah. Because it's the, and everybody hires a transaction manager first. Um, I would say that's not, sh that shouldn't be your first hire. It should be the person who's working your database and managing the marketing, yeah. because that's the first thing that goes, I'll get back to that. It's not <laughs> yeah. the thing that's ever going to be on fire. And then it just gets dropped. And so then they go on that roller coaster of real estate and, um, and it's no fun. It's Especially just, with whatever you do here has to be consistent. Yeah. I talk about a lot of time with, with farming that people say it takes you know six to 18 months to see results, but it also say it takes six to 18 months to see the dip as well. So it takes time to build it up. And if you stop doing what works, if you're not tracking and not growing six to 18 months go by, and now you don't have the market share you had. And it's like, you've lost it. Now you got to gain it back again. So yeah, mm -hmm. it's staying on top of it, which is huge. So that's, that's awesome. Um, we always wrap up with your best book. So what's one book that you'd absolutely recommend that's either made an impact in your life or you think would have an impact in our viewer's life? The book I've been giving out the most lately is Rocket Fuel. Oh, I love um, it. It's a great book. Because, you know, I was the, you know, I'm the visionary, I'm the um, influencer, yep. but I could care less about P&L statements and <laughs> mission checks and all of that. Like, yeah. you know, um, so my husband is the broker and he's, you know, bringing him in was truly rocket fuel for our business. And um it's just really knowing your strengths and then finding that um, alter ego, the other person that, that the integrator, if you're the, you know, um, visionary, or maybe you're the integrator and you need somebody that can think bigger or yeah. is more influential, you know, but having the two together becomes rocket fuel. So I love yeah. rocket. Yeah. It's a great book. I bought it for my old business partner, bought it for my brother, bought it for a friend of mine. It's an excellent book and just a really helps you reframe how they see partnerships and businesses and how you can grow it. So that's a great suggestion. So we always wrap up then with how people can connect and find out what you're up to. So how can people connect to see what you're doing? You mentioned they can kind of check out your, your social media. How can people find out what you're doing? Yeah. The good news is, is my last name is easily Googleable and <laughs> nobody else has it. So um, Jenny Wiemert, uh, W-E-M-E-R-T. Um, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, um, my cell phone is on my Facebook page, <laughs> on the front page, Practice even what you my preach. personal oh. cell phone, imagine that, like yeah. I'm not a secret agent. Yeah. So you can find me, I'm happy to help. And I will share a link to that presentation, even though it was just copy and paste stuff. If you would like it, I'll, I'll give you a bit yeah, of that. You can. Yeah, we'll put that in the show notes so people can check that out. So thank you for being on again. You were a great guest last time. You're an even better guest this time because you've got even more wealth of information. I really appreciate you sharing what you've done and how you've grown. It's an inspiration to see and give for agents who really want to keep growing. And that's awesome to see you continually succeeding and bringing value to your clients and to my audience as well. So thank you for being my on. Pleasure. appreciate it. Thank awesome. you. Thanks. Thanks for checking out today's episode. If you'd like more videos like this, be sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check out our Facebook page and our other social media channels. Looking forward to bringing you more great content like this and happy farming.